spiritual narcissism, the most poisonous form of ego identification. How do we eradicate it from our spiritual lives? We are about to go so deep. Grab some popcorn and a baby dove. Welcome to another episode of Toilet Toyoka. So what is a spiritual narcissist? These are self-absorbed manipulators who use spiritual and religious texts, tenets, dogmas as a way of abusing other people. So they'll take something that's true, something you believe in, and they will pervert it in order to justify their abuse. They could be the leaders or the people in the group, the followers, seekers as well. So keep in mind, it's not always just that they're drawn to that position of power. They could be in the group and doing the same exact thing. They will always use love bombing to hook you, just like the other forms of narcissism. Their particular brand of love bombing is going to be wrapped in some sort of spiritual jargon. They know exactly how to say the right words. They really mastered that in order to recruit the victims. So they'll start grooming you into thinking that they're your soulmate or that you're special or you have these spiritual gifts and you're so talented. You're such a healer or medicine man, woman. Or they'll be very altruistic, flaunting how much they help the orphans. They'll think they're a really helpful person. They have a spiritual form of superiority. So they will really believe in this new age spirituality, the Buddhism, Tantra, whatever it is, be very cautious because they could be preying upon your own subconscious feelings of superiority that you actually are somehow chosen or better than everyone else holier than thou because of your spiritual connection i'm such a conduit the council of Ra. they'll tap into that and you bring that out in you and you'll be wrapped up in their program and you'll think that's a really positive thing to be. But keep in mind, the spiritual narcissists, they often have spiritual knowledge and gifts and talents, like something special about them. And it can be really confusing. Like you'll think they're actually a good person, brother, sister. And they will use triangulation whether they're the leader or one of the followers to generate a sense of chaos and competition. I'm a greater guru, get certified. Now here's some things that spiritual narcissists will say. A lot of it will have truth, but it will be somehow perverted into justifying their truth. One thing they'll say is you need to be vulnerable to heal, open, surrender. But see, what they're saying is they want you to open up more so they have more things to use against you as a weapon. They want you to relax, let your guard down, release your boundaries, open. That's why it's all these embodiment type group hugs. They're also going to use this to use the spiritual bypassing to open up the abuse. For example, try to forgive someone who you're not ready to forgive yet. You get to decide when you want to forgive someone. And maybe for you, it isn't exactly about forgiving. It's about working on purging all the heavy stuff. But they'll be there right next to you. Anyways, they try to flip it out, flip it around on you. And they'll say, you're aggressive. Anytime you try to set boundaries, they also say, you have so much ego. 
Your ego is so big and you have so much fear. So what they're doing is dismissing your concern. You have fear because something's fishy. Trust that. And they'll turn it around on you and say, oh, it's your ego that's fearful and they'll shame you. And they'll get other people in that group to turn against you. You gotta get rid of the fear. They'll call you judgmental when you call out abuse. And when you call out an abuser, they also try to shadow ban you and exile you and shame you. It's important to recognize that, see it, feel it, believe it. Oh, the law of attraction. Attract your true awareness. They'll say, you're not spiritual and you're not enlightened. If you're not vegan, if you're angry, if, if you're using strong words, you're wearing black, you're, you're wearing makeup. It's all about control. Everything is a mirror of you. So you must be able to see that's you actually. What? They're, it's a way of blame shifting. So you they can't feel guilty. This whole idea of the mirror is really wrong. It's nuanced. When you look into the mirror, you don't see the exact same thing. Left is right and right is left. So it's more of a yin yang. It's a contrast, a compliment. Priority, shaming, spiritual word salad. So they'll use a lot of quotes from spiritual texts and other dogmas to justify their point of view. And they'll bombard you with it to make you feel like they're better than you. And you need to get in line or you're going to get kicked out called not spiritual. The spiritual bypass is their favorite tool. It's going to get you to stop looking at what you actually need to look at and feel your body. They'll circumvent that, avoid the responsibility, avoiding the really deep stuff. And that whole process to get you to forgive and let go without let you, letting you actually process that falls into that category. It starts with you being vulnerable and talking about your pain from your past. Another tool is spirituality as a form of attainment. Get certified, go up in the hierarchy. They're going to force you to use their way of thinking, their terminology. And the focus is going to be on gaining status and gifts and powers, manifestation, abundance, live your best life that has nothing to do with spirituality. And they'll use things like love and light, positive vibes only, and they'll turn it against you as soon as you call out something negative, where you see through the veil. They're going to tell you to bury that through gaslighting. You're too negative. You're not really. A they create an environment with a lot of rules and regulations. And it's like you're walking on eggshells and you have to be careful not to trigger anyone. You might, because you ate something and they saw you eating something that you weren't supposed to eat and you felt shame and you have to adhere to these rules in order not to offend anyone. You start feeling like you're walking on eggshells in that community. You can't really be authentic, even though they're saying be authentic. They'll be saying like, that's not you. That's the authentic you. That's your ego version. Our version is the authentic one. It's so perverted. Now here's some tips to develop immunity. Stop looking outside of yourself for approval and validation to belong. Spirituality is about your connection to spirit and whatever you want to call it. It's not an attainment. It's not, I'm holier than thou. These are the traps that get you. Boundaries, boundaries. So you don't overshare. 
Don't let them in too deep. One of their specialties is to just get you to want to open up and share so much about yourself. That's what they're going to use against you. So protect your heart and protect your mind. Take your time. Don't get too enmeshed in that culture. Be careful when it's a secret thing, confidential. There should be no reason you can't tell people about what you've been learning. When they start telling you can't leave the room, nobody can know these practices, it's very secret, special and secret. Be careful about that. It comes back to this isolation, part of the Stockholm Syndrome. When they can isolate you from outside perspectives and you can't talk about it, it makes you a very easy target. If it doesn't feel good, get out. Do your own spiritual practice. Come back to your roots. Don't hang on to some of the little benefits if you're finding a beauty. Be your own connection to spirit, to source, to God. The spiritual narcissists will always insert themselves at the middleman. That you need them in order to connect to something higher. You don't need that middleman. You don't need that guru teacher. Next, cut the energetic cord. A lot of these people have very strong psychic gifts, intense eye contact, or they're just connecting to you psychically. And if you're very open and intuitive, empathic, you're going to be feeling that. Get out. That's the most common form of hoovering. They'll use their powers to get you hooked energetically. So basically, I wanted to share that it's important for you to come back to you. But also that, how do you speak up when you feel like you can't speak? Like you're stuck in the bathroom in your parents' house because you have trauma from your young kid, your voice is stuck. I personally feel trapped and isolated right now. It's a financial and a health thing. And this has been how the family unit can bring you into a situation that's kind of like when you're in a spiritual community and you're vulnerable, you want to survive. And I see this happening in the spiritual community too. A lot of people want to survive and they'll put up with things that they wouldn't if they had all their own resources. They wouldn't, for example, have a, put up with some rich guru who's a little bit involved in their activity. So a lot of the danger these days is business people, narcissistic people who made the money, they have the clout and the status. They go to a spiritual community where there are a lot of vulnerable new yoga teachers, people on their journey to become their own versions, best versions of themselves. And they are able to insert themselves as in a position of, Hey, I can help you reach your goals. Just use my retreat center, join my programs here. We have all these things we can offer you. And I'm going to give you an opportunity. Maybe you get a job with us. And this is, it's painful. It's sad for me to feel and see that. I notice the people, maybe they had good intentions at first, but then it becomes, you can feel it. They start gaining power and they start, it hurts getting to their head. They start forming an exclusive group. And if you can feel the superiority just grow. I've seen this happen in people. I felt it in myself. The people that I've felt close to and initially when we were all kind of didn't know what was going on, but then they start building out their versions of their kind of cult 
and then suddenly I'm bad for business or I'm unconscious or just crazy. They love it. They love exiling you into that you're crazy, you're unconscious. We need to keep our special circle. I used to get invited to these events, these kind of tantric, completely dissolve into each other type events. But I stopped as soon as I started standing up for and speaking out. And they'll say, oh, it's lashing out. I'm fucking processing it, man. I think basically you need to come to a point where the fire rage and the violation is so strong that you do lash out. But hopefully this video can help you not reach that point and you can actually start making some choices. And it's not easy, especially if you're vulnerable, you don't know what's going to happen. But I'm telling you, if you keep letting these little violations happen, you're going to get completely wrapped up in it and spit out or you get hurt or something. But we have to take responsibility too. So part of this is noticing where are you vulnerable? Where are you likely to get caught and become a narcissist yourself? So this is the other thing. All this stuff might actually feed your own narcissism. And you might actually become the actual thing that I'm talking about here. And we're all potentially very likely easily. Be, I think it's very easy for us to get caught into that, especially if you're going through a spiritual awakening, your old identity is blown up. You don't know who you are. There's a vulnerability there. And it's not easy to feel that way. So you position yourself in a sense of superiority. Like I know what's happening. This is why perhaps so many of these young people in their twenties I've met in these communities, you talk to them and they know everything they have already coaching programs and systems that they've implemented to market themselves as some sort of knower and guru, a manifestation, tantra, coach, helping you grow, attain. It's very scary to me when I really look into it. And I hope you see that too, because I don't see it getting any better. It's just, it's maybe it needs to get worse until it gets better, until people start imploding on themselves. But meanwhile, there's somebody getting really rich off all this. So we have to examine that. Until next time, peace out. Namaste. Stay in your own way. Out. Please follow Atayoka on the major social media channels to receive constant reminders to drop the ego, surrender the story, and dot 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 well, gain attainment in aha. Become unfuckwithable.